In this video tutorial, I want to show how to create a 4K time lapse in Final Cut Pro. The version I'm using is here. It's Final Cut Pro 10. It's version 10.4.6, but uh, this will also work in uh, previous versions if they are not too old in Final Cut Pro. The situation is the following. Uh, I was taking a sequence of shots uh, with the intervalometer built into my Leica Q2 camera. The Leica Q2 is the new Leica compact camera, but with a full frame sensor and 47 megapixels of resolution. So plenty of room and reserves to create a 4K time lapse. Now, like many other cameras, the Leica Q2 has the option to um, compile still images in camera into a time lapse video, but the output is only 1080p. So if I want to get to a 4K video, I need to take the sequence of still images and compile them into a video myself using software. And the one I'm using here is Final Cut Pro. The way to do this is the following. I briefly want to show my workflow if I'm doing these kind of projects. So I go to File, New, and I create a new library. And in line with my project, I call this 4K Time Lapse. And then Final Cut Pro creates for me the library and already also some events. So this one here is labeled for today, carrying the date. It's a Saturday today. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to import media. And when importing media, I want to make sure I have a clear segregation between different media types. That means I want to have one event for photos, one event for video clips, if I want to use different video clips and cut them together and also one event for soundtracks if I want to underpin my video with music. And the way to do this is go to File, New and Event. And the first event is Photos. It's slotted under my 4K time-lapse library and all photos I'm using for my time-lapse video will be imported into that event. For the sake of completeness, although I'm not using here, let's also create the other typical events I use, so video clips. And then another one for uh, soundtracks. And then my uh, library basically is set up in the way I wanted. Clear uh, separation between video clips, soundtracks or music and photos. The next step I do is I import the still images I want to compile together in the clip into the photo section. So let's go to import media. And in import media, it's referencing my hard disk here. And there is a folder which I want to use. Let's uh, take this one here. So you see the images here. Let's click on one. And it's called Leica Q2 Parkplatz time lapse. A Parkplatz in German is a parking lot. And it was a spot where I just stopped my car to take a sequence of shots. Now, if you are in the uh, image folder, press Command A to select them all and then choose import all. And then you see here progress, processing files for import and my photos or my still images will be placed in my photos event. And you see the other events are empty here. So I clearly managed to separate different media types here. You also see here in the background task manager that this is still importing. And the reason is that uh, we have 47 megapixel still images here and it might take quite a while to import them. The last thing I want to mention here is we have 480 still images and if I want to do the video in 24 frames per second, that corresponds to a 20 second give or take uh, video duration. And I'm going to show this in a moment. So they are all imported now. So we can go to the new project section here. This is the place where my timeline and is later located and where my video clips, photos and soundtracks, if I would work with various of them, uh, could be arranged. So let's go to new project. We call this Leica Q2 time lapse. Let's also specify here that this is a 4K resolution. And then here on the video section, you can choose all different video formats. So you could also take 1080p, uh, even up to 5K. I take 4K here. It gives me the correct resolution already. And on the frame rate, I said already we have 480 items or 480 images here. So that means 20 seconds should be 24 frames per second. Then times 10 is 240 times 2 for 10 seconds to 20 seconds is uh, 480 frames. There are some options which are tempting because they look quite close. But uh, just a word of warning here, if you work with time coding in a longer video project, you need to make sure that your frame rate is uh, matching the way you do your time coding. 
So it is actually not the same whether you choose 23.98p or 24p. Uh, and uh, you should make sure you have the selection here you really want. Then on the rendering part, I can choose what, uh, what uh, the rendering uh, method here is. Apple ProRes is just doing fine. So let's uh, kick off the project here. And now you see I have my timeline here. You see here in the uh, control panel of the timeline how time changes if I move forth and back with my uh, mouse pointer. And there is one important thing I want to mention here. We have eight digits here. The first six digits, they refer to time. So seconds, minutes, hours. But the last two digits, they do not refer to time, but to frames. And that is important when doing time lapses because you want to assign one frame with one still image and then make sure 24 of them are compiled within one second. So let's get the uh, photos uh, arranged in the timeline. So I go to the uh, photo section. I click into the photo section. I choose command A for selecting them all. And then I drag and drop them down to my timeline here. This might take a moment because uh, it's uh, 480, 47 megapixels images. And depending on performance of computer, this might take a while. And then we're good to go. Now the next thing, and again, remember those two digits here, they refer to frames. Let's uh, click into the timeline. Let's press again, Command and A for selecting them all. And then we go into the duration section. And for going to durations, you press Control, keep pressing Control, and then at the same time, press D for duration. Now what happened here is you see that changed color. And uh, if I now want to make sure that one still image is associated with one frame, we just press one here and return. And then you see how all these frames where every image was had a duration of about 10 seconds are boiling down to a very short clip with, if you look at the, uh, at the control panel now, if I start from zero and look at the time section, not at the frames, it's going almost up to 20 seconds, which is what I wanted. And you actually see uh, it's hard to, hard to uh, fully follow it. But if I go through my timeline and look at the uh, frames section here, it's always counting from 1 to 24. So let's do this. 24 switch, 24 switch, and so on. So we have now 24 still images compiled into one second. And the last step we need to do here is uh, if you accidentally clicked somewhere else, click into the timeline again, press Command A for selecting all of them, and then right click on the yellow marked area and say new compound clip. And then we call this, we, I don't want to have the clip here, so let's get this away. And then you see, now we have a video clip here with 24 frames per second, 24 images within one second, 480 frames, per, 480 frames gives me 20 seconds video duration. That's basically it. The last thing you want to consider is whether you want to um, export this to your hard disk. And the way to do this is make sure the clip is marked. So it gets a yellow boundary here, border, go to file, go to share, and then you have different options here. So for instance, Apple devices 4k on a MacBook or a Mac computer will place this into iTunes. And uh, then in iTunes, you can further process, drag and drop to several folders of your hard disk or what have you. Um, I will go to export file. And if you don't have export file showing up here in this menu, this is something you can uh, trigger by going to the preferences. And in the preferences, you have different sections here. Go to destinations. And then on destinations, what I showed before under file and share, is shown here in this section. And if export file is not there, you have it here and you can use the plus sign to add another destination and an export file will show up here. So again, let's make sure the video clip is marked. So with a yellow border, let's go to file, let's go to share, let's go to export file. And now we can export this. You see here the resolution is correct. Frames per seconds is correct. Video duration is exactly 20 seconds. That's corresponding to the 480 frames, to, sorry, to the 480 images with 24 frames per second. And you can also do certain adjustments here. So the description, this is about, I think is a very tedious pre-population by uh, Apple. So let's just call this Leica Q2 time-lapse 4K. On the settings section, you can choose whether you wanna have video and audio, video only, audio only. I did not drag and drop from the soundtrack section here, a sound clip to my timeline. So there is no audio anyway, but let's keep it this way. 
On the video codec, you can choose different resolutions and different qualities. Um, sorry, the resolution is always the same, but a different uh, video codec and rendering. And this will influence uh, the storage capacity for the video clip. So H.264 is about 140 megabytes. If you would go to Apple ProRes, let's choose this one here, it goes up to 1.2 gigabytes. And if you would choose even the high quality, it goes up to 1.8 gigabytes. I think the uh, H.264 is just fine here. And uh, then the last thing you can uh, choose here is whether you want to immediately play this in quick time when it is processed. I typically have to do nothing because I want to decide myself what's happening when the video is finally processed. Let's go to next. And then I can choose my folder. So this is going to my desktop. The title of the file is correct. And let's just save it now. And then the video is starting to process. And you can again go to the background uh, task manager here where you have uh, your progress in uh, 360 degrees uh, clockwise and you see sharing, it gives you the progress in terms of sharing. And then when the video is finally done, it will be on my desktop folder and I can further process or send it to someone, upload it, whatever I want. If you want to check out the result of that little uh, time-lapse video, please go to my video Leica Q 4K time-lapse on my channel. I place a reference and a link uh, to that video down in the info box section below my video and check it out.